Hey guys, it's Miss Adelini. Um, this video, the second of two, is going to be on ecological succession. The first video you watched was on ecology basics. Let's get started. Right, we define ecological succession as changes within an ecosystem where we start out with a population of organisms that gets replaced by other more successful organisms and we continue to replace organisms over and over again um, until we get to what's called a climax community, which we'll talk about in a second. We have two types of succession, primary and secondary succession. Primary succession is um, going to start in an area where we don't have any existing community, so there's no living things in that area to start. So for example, a bare rock, like the one shown up above, um, might be where we start primary succession. Also a sand dune where there's no living things or an island that's been created by a volcanic eruption. This shows succession down at the bottom starting with bedrock, adding some very simple organisms like lichens and mosses, and then we start to add larger herbs and grasses, um, bushes and shrubs, then we start to get some of these trees. The first organisms that come into an area um, that doesn't have living organisms are called pioneer species, pioneers because they come first. Usually those pioneer species are going to be small, they grow quickly, and they reproduce quickly so they can colonize an area fast. Okay, so let's say we have this bare rock that's left after a glacier has melted. We have some pioneer species, and a good example of a pioneer species might be a moss or a lichen. And a lichen is going to be a symbiotic relationship between a moss, not a moss, sorry, a lichen is a symbiotic relationship between an algae and a fungus. So it's actually two organisms living together. And this picture up top is a lichen. I'm sure you've seen them on trees before. Okay. The mosses and the lichens are eventually going to die throughout their normal lifespan. And when they die, their bodies become the first soil layer. Once we have our first soil layer, grasses can grow in it and small plants. As the soil layer gets thicker and thicker, we can add small shrubs and then eventually trees. So that's primary succession. Secondary succession is when you have an area that did have living things, but the community, the group of living organisms, has been destroyed in some way. Like, for example, a forest fire has destroyed a community and secondary succession is going to occur. Also, um, some farmers in the process of farming will completely destroy the soil to the point where succession has to start over. Now, those aren't the good farmers, but you know. Um, eventually, succession is going to slow down. It's not going to continue replacing um, our groups of organisms forever. Eventually we get to a stable community, and this right here is our climax community, the final group of organisms, and in Virginia, in a temperate deciduous forest, that's going to be comprised of mostly oak and hickory trees, which are hardwood trees, and they're very tall. Now, oftentimes, this does not get replaced until we have some sort of major disaster that kills off the climax community. Just another image of secondary succession after a forest fire. We do have to have pioneer species come in. Um, they're not always mosses and lichens. If you have enough of a soil layer, you can get grasses and weeds in the soil. And usually those pioneer species get outcompeted by other species um, that are a little bit larger, and that's how they get replaced. So those larger species will compete with them for resources and win. All right, that's it for succession.
And next time we will go on to energy transfer within an ecosystem. Thank you much. Bye-bye.